National Outreach Specialist at Wolfram Research. I have been with Wolfram for about four years, and before that, my background was in mathematics and education. One of my main goals at Wolfram is to increase the use of our technologies in education and in the classroom. So I'm not sure how much you guys know about Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha, or any of our other projects, but I'm going to give you a quick demo of those resources that are open today. So let's start with the big one, which is Wolfram Alpha. So what is Wolfram Alpha? We'd like to call Wolfram Alpha a computational knowledge engine. It has the goal of making all of the world's knowledge computable and accessible to everybody. So Wolfram Alpha not only returns, Wolfram Alpha actually returns results to your inquiries, not just links. So some people like to compare us to a search engine, and we are actually very different than a search engine. So if you put in a certain result into any of the search engines you know, know about, whether they're Google or Bing or any of the others, it will give you back a link of results, and then you can go from there to find what you are looking for, where Wolfram Alpha actually returns direct results on the page, as you can see. So for example, If you input something like calories in four carrots into Google, you get this back. Where if you enter the same thing into Wolfram Alpha, you will get back the exact result of the amount of calories in four carrots, which is 54 calories, and of course, all sorts of other information that you may be interested in. All the nutritional facts, the average daily value, average nutrients, calories, etc. So that's just one example. So what does Wolfram Alpha actually cover? Some people have this thought that Wolfram Alpha is actually just for math teachers, and that is definitely not true. Wolfram Alpha covers all subjects, so anything from history to nutrition, as I just showed, to music and astronomy, chemistry, physics, um, famous people, statistics, uh, basically anything that you could imagine Wolfram Alpha can cover. So let's try a few examples to get an idea of the other things that Wolfram Alpha can cover. So if you input something like earthquakes in Japan, uh -oh. let's try again. There we go. So you will get back a map of all the earthquakes in Japan in which you can actually interact with this and say you want earthquakes of magnitude 7 or greater. It will tell you there's none or of one magnitude 1 or greater. I apologize. My connection must be being faulty at the moment. There we go. And then you could also see a timeline of that same information on a different graph to get an idea of how often these earthquakes actually happen, as well as a detailed list of all of the earthquakes. Let's see what else Wolfram Alpha can do. How about the income of the US divided by the income of France? So one of the cool things Wolfram Alpha does is since we store so much data, we can take that data and then do live computations on that. So for example, you can actually divide two quantities that you have no idea what the actual results are. So you can say income of US divided by income of France. And if you want to see the details of which of these separately, you can see that the United States has 14 trillion per year about, and France has 2 trillion per year approximately. So then you can go down and also, of course, see a graph about that as well. Some other things Wolfram Alpha does well, we compare things pretty well, because one of the cool things Wolfram Alpha also does, you can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Here we're comparing two animals, but you can also compare, say, two different foods or two different countries or two different stocks 
anything, basically anything that you would want to compare, you're able to compare inside of Wolfram Alpha. So here you can see the side-by-side -side comparison of their differences. Killer whale versus blue whale, which one lives longer. Images, if you wanted to know what they look like, basically anything that we can possibly collect data on or that's computable, Wolfram Alpha can show you back, show you results back. How about something like how far is Argentina? So now what is this engine doing? It's actually picking up your location via your IP address. So I am located in Boston, Massachusetts. And in order for me to get to the center of Argentina, I have to travel 5,271 miles. So how long will that take me? Well, if I took a plane, it would take me 9 hours and 35 minutes. If I had the magical power of traveling like light and fiber, I would get there really quickly, 40 milliseconds. So, and of course, you can also see a map of the distance between the two as well. Okay, how about something like the current president? So as you can see, we all know that our current president is Barack Obama, and you can see the information about his presidency, um, as well as his term, which started in 2009, and some history of who was before him. And, of course, we can also com cover chemistry. So we're balancing chemical equations. You can see the details of these equations as well. <coughs> Apologize for that. So, you can also see structures, the names, the equilibrium, as well as more information about each property. So just to give you an example of the other things that Wolfram Alpha covers, in case we didn't talk about it, there's a whole examples page, which is actually probably the best place to start if you have never used Wolfram Alpha before. So the examples page guides you through all the different things we cover from math to people to culture and media to music to food and nutrition, astronomy, earth sciences, shopping. I mean, it goes on and on. However, like I said, although we just showed all of the things that weren't mathematics, we can also cover things, we also cover all levels of mathematics from the very basic arithmetic to plotting and research level mathematics, even as far as harder equations and integrals go. So let's see what type of math inputs we can cover. So if we start really easy with something like arithmetic, you can see that we can easily give you back the solution of adding two fractions. And one of the cool things that Wolfram Alpha does is that we actually have a step-by-step -step solution. The step-by-step -step solution will actually guide you through solving or simplifying. So you can press next step, and it will give you a hint. And then you hit the step after that, and it will actually do the calculation for you. And you can continue going through as you're working down the problem to help guide you through the result. If you don't want to go step by step, you can show all steps at once. And then you can see the problem from the very beginning to the solution. You can also do things like solving equations. Again, you get an answer to be x equals 2. You also can see a plot with that. And of course, you can also see the step by step solution. So same thing, you can go step by step or see all the steps at once. So just so you guys are aware, the step by step feature of Wolfram Alpha is actually free for three inputs a day. So you can use step by step three times a day for free. Other than that, it's actually under Wolfram Alpha 
Pro, which is a subscription. I just wanted to make you aware. But the step-by-step -step part is really cool. We can also do, we can also plot any function you might want to plot. Here's an example of the sine curve. And you could, of course, give it parameters, say, from negative 10 to 10. Oh, that was an example of it not understanding linguistics, but here we are. <laughs> so just with a change of a few things, you can see that you can plot the sine of x from negative 10 to 10 to be more specific. So Wolfram Alpha covers tons of mathematics, as I spoke about earlier. So here's just some examples of the things that we do cover that we didn't talk about in depth. Elementary math, numbers, plotting, algebra, and each of these things, if you're interested in them, you can easily, discrete mathematics, you can click on each one of these and it will give you more detailed information about that category. So you can see subcategories then. So one of the next things after we made Wolfram Alpha that we created was the ability to create Wolfram Alpha widgets. Wolfram Alpha widgets are essentially give you the ability to target Wolfram Alpha queries. So you can actually enter a query into a widget and then choose the things that you want to vary and then basically put input fields for those things. So for example, just to see what it looks like, here is our Wolfram Alpha widget gallery. So let's see. Here's one that compares company sizes. There's also the ability to find an object in the sky. And let me sign in to see to show you how you go through making these. So in order to create a widget, all you have to do is start with a Wolfram Alpha query. So for example, we can say something like distance from, I don't know, two cities. So say Boston to, uh, to Austin, Texas. And it will first let you try it. And then you'll get back the results that you see in Wolfram Alpha. And then if you like what you see, you can press the button Use It. From there, you now choose your variables. So my two variables are just going to be the two different cities. Press Next. And it will basically create this for you. And from here, it's basically just design. So if I want the widget title to be something like distance between cities, and then you can move all of this around if you want to. Uh, so this could be city one. OK, and then if you want to add city two, you can just easily do that as well. So they're very, you can play with them to make them exactly how you want them to be. And then you could press the next button. And now you can put these widgets on any website that you have, and users can easily just change the inputs to get back exactly what they're looking for. So we have a lot of teachers who put them on their individual web pages or professors um, as well. And then once you publish it, it will be live, and then you can do with it what you want. So I'm actually not going to publish this one, but all you really have to do is enter the Publish Now button, and it will publish it for you. So I already went through some examples that we have, so I'm not going to go through that again. Another thing that I want to show you guys as part of our open Wolfram technologies is one of my favorite tools in teaching, which is the Wolfram Demonstrations Project. So I'm not sure if any of you are aware of this, but it's essentially 
a collection of applications that have been built inside of Mathematica, which you can easily use by you can easily interact with by using the Wolfram CDF player, which I will talk about more in a little while, but it's just a free download. So for example, here is one demonstration that someone made where you can just change the universal time and the day of the year to see what the local times look like and see the map as well. Here's one that simulates boys. So the flocking of boys, and if I play it, you will see how these little guys are interacting and how they change their flocking behaviors and avoid each other. So to give you a real idea of what this looks like, let's look at the actual demonstrations website. So this is the Wolfram Demonstrations Project. The best way to look through it, well, there's two ways to look through it. So the first way to search is through keywords. The second way is to look at our topics list. So for example, if you are looking for mathematics, um, let's start with school mathematics, high school math, say high school algebra. You can see that we have 58 demonstrations for high school algebra. So to see a basic one, let's see. So if we wanted to see the slope and equations of lines through points, we could first view the line between these two points and then see the actual slope-intercept equation or the point-slope equation as well. And you can immediately interact with these because of the Wolfram CDF player. And also for reference, if any of you are in um, high school teaching positions, and that's what you're interested in. We've actually aligned them to the Common Core standards, which are the U.S. standards, but we plan in the future to also expand to other countries' standards as well. So as you can see, these topics go from anywhere, from math to the different types of sciences, engineering, technology, Sometimes just things for fun. So if you just look at our world in geography, there's some cool geography ones as well. Locating capital cities. I'm going to skip that one because that one's going to take a little while to download. Um, let's see. World energy and electricity, oil and gas. So there's all sorts of different ways that you can interact with these, and I think they're a really cool teaching tool, whether for in the classroom or online education, because it allows students and the educators to actually interact with something and understand the concepts better. So I briefly talked about CDF which is our computable document format. So what is CDF? It basically allows you to create something in Mathematica that you can then share with those who don't have Mathematica. So just to give a brief overview, but I don't want to talk too much about it since I want to focus on our open availabilities. But Mathematica is our proprietary software. It's our computer algebra system that allows for great deals of computation and interaction and programming. So if you have Mathematica, you can create these demonstrations and then share them with people. You can also just create plain notebooks and share them with your students or peers. And it still allows a lot of the computation that is available in Mathematica without those people needing to actually buy a copy of Mathematica. So we like to say it brings static documents to life. So Reports can now be interactive with computations embedded inside of them, which is pretty cool. So the release of CDF opened for a whole new world of Wolfram's technologies in education. It allowed for interactive books and easy deployment. We actually have a couple of partnerships with publishers who use CDF as their platform for their textbooks in order to allow their students to actually have that interaction. And we also 
made a site called the Wolfram Education Portal. And the Wolfram Education Portal is basically a place where we keep all of our free educational resources broken down by course. So for example, within algebra, again, we're just talking basic algebra here, not higher level at the moment. You can see the breakdown of all the sections that we cover, which we use the textbook from CK12, which is also an open source. And we took their content and we actually made an interactive version. So here you can see that, say, addition of rational numbers. You can now have links to things like Wolfram Alpha, where you can automatically see more information about a expression or function immediately. We also have some other abilities embedded. Let's see if I can find. So we also embedded widgets. So those things that I talked about earlier where you can create a um, direct call to Wolfram Alpha through widgets. This is an example of one embedded in an online text. So you can press compute and Wolfram Alpha will just give the results within the page. So there you are. And then we also took some of the demonstrations and embedded them as well. Let me see if there's actually one on this page. There might not be, so let me find you an example of one. How about multiplication of rational numbers? There's a widget, another widget. And then here is one of the actual demonstrations embedded within a text where you can actually change, change the sizes in order to understand how multiplication is commutative. So this is basically the topics view of all the different things that, algebra, that we cover in algebra, but there's also a library view. And within the library view, you can see all the textbook sections. We've also made lesson plans, which cover, um, which use our technologies to cover different standards and different topics, as well as demonstrations that help with that subject. So these are the algebra demonstrations that we pulled out and some other widgets that have been made by other people that also might help with algebra. So currently this is still in beta. It's just a project um, that we are doing to create open resources. And we are currently covering algebra completely. So we actually have a textbook and lesson plans for algebra. But we are also covering calculus, pre-calculus, and physics on a basic level. So what does that mean? We basically just have a library for these courses at the moment where we can point out the demonstrations that are very useful for calculus and the widgets that you might also be interested in. And we hope in the future to expand this to courses in the sciences and to get full coverage in all of the courses as well. So I think that is actually all of these things that I wanted to show you today. So does anybody have any questions about either Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Alpha widgets, demonstrations, or the Wolfram Education Portal, or anything else that I may be able to answer? Sure, so the question is, how do you attribute results? And that's an actual, actually a really good question. So let me show you. Oops, let me find, <laughs> there's too many windows open. Here, let me just open a new one. So each page in Wolfram Alpha actually has the source listed at the bottom of the page. So for instance, something like um, President of the U.S. as we did before. You already know what the results are going to look like. But at the bottom here, you can see that there's a button that you can click on that has the sources. And this will just open and give you more information about where these sources come from. So you can actually use us as a primary source. However, 
the where the sources came from are listed within the page. So the next question is, does anyone create a calculus text using Wolfram Alpha? It might be a great thing to do. That is a really good question. I'm actually not sure of the answer to that. Nobody that I know of yet that is published. I agree that it would definitely be a very cool thing to do. Wolfram Alpha has great abilities within calculus, and I do think it would add a cool ability to a calculus text. So the next question is about copyrights of produced Wolfram Alpha sources. We do have a whole page on our terms of use. Let me see if I can find it. Basically, anything that you use should obviously be cited properly. Um, saying that you used Wolfram Alpha's results. Let me see if it gives you a better. So here, see standard citation elements for Wolfram Alpha for specific elements and an example. So there's an example of how you can cite how you use Wolfram Alpha. Does that answer your question? So the question is about the Creative Commons license on a textbook. That is a really good question. If you, so the, are you referring to an open free textbook? Sure, so it would definitely be different depending on whether you're talking about Okay, so if you use Wolfram Alpha to produce an open textbook, it would definitely depend how you do it. There are definitely ways in order to do that with using Wolfram Alpha in a free manner. We do have partnerships where people actually license our API because their final product is not open. So if anybody is actually making any sort of a profit using Wolfram Engine, then of course we do have a business partnership with them. We do work with people who have open textbooks, and in that case, we just need to make sure you follow the correct terms of use in order to do that. Um, it's not possible to cache results on your end. So as long as you're linking to Wolfram Alpha, um, 
that is a safe way to do it as long as we're going back to our page or if you're using widgets within to link back to our page as well. And we would be happy to work with you if that's something you wanted to work on. And we could help you make sure that we can follow the right arrangements. Yes, that is definitely a great idea. And I would be happy to talk to you further as you start thinking about the idea further. Any other questions? Thank you guys very much for your time. And I will just put my email in the chat window. I know it was up earlier, but if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Are there any educational videos? 